Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 31. In this tutorial we are going to add in some fonts for some of our UI elements and we're also going to start looking at creating a script which will allow us to control what hints are displayed in our top left box on screen. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So first things first, I think we should create a new folder for any fonts that we store in our game. Usually a game will have quite a few different types of fonts. It'll usually have a main font for something like maybe subtitles, one for on-screen display, and you know, a game can range anywhere from three fonts to about 20 different fonts. I'm not sure how many we're going to have throughout the development of this, but in this tutorial, we're going to bring in two different fonts. So let's right click, create folder. We'll just call it fonts. So I'm going to bring in that classic price down font, which is iconic to the Grand Theft Auto style. And I'm also going to bring in a bit of a squiggly style font, which is going to be for our locations, which we'll end up putting in the bottom right side of our screen. So I'm going to take both of these and bring them into Unity. I'm not going to have these on my website. If you do need them, um, you could easily Google them. You don't necessarily have to have these fonts either, but it's definitely worthwhile have, going to Google and just having a quick search for commercial free fonts or something to that effect, and you'll be able to find some for your game. So let's start by turning off the fade in screen again so we can see a couple of things. And let's start with our ammo count right here. So let's go to our font, click the little button next to it, and you can see that in this list, we now have those fonts available to us. So let's click on price down BL. It looks a little bit crazy, but hey, that's not to worry. Let's turn the bold off and we should be able to see it a little better. So by default, I think price down does come a bit bolded. So just be mindful when you're adding these fonts of how they are by default. Let's do the same to our cash count as well. Let's turn the bold off and let's add price down there. So now you can see this coming together a little bit better. I'm quite happy with how it's starting to look. Maybe let's increase the size of these fonts a bit. Let's say 36 and increase the box size for that. Let's bring our cash box down. Mm, yeah, I, th I think 36 should be okay. And let's do the same with our cache and obviously change the size of the box. So maybe somewhere around there. And it's okay that the boxes intersect. It's not gonna to make too much of a difference. They should still should look pretty decent. So there's the fonts applied to our ammo and our cache. Like I say, the other one that we're going to use is when we'd have our location name down here in the bottom right. What I want to focus on here is the generation of hints in this box. So this box needs to contain another game object, which will be a text box. So on the hint box, right click, let's go to UI and let's have text. Let's set this text as white. I'll probably keep it as Arial for now. Um, maybe another font at some other point. Uh, but let's just kind of place this maybe about there. And by default, let's, I want this to be blank, but um, let's type in the text that we would hope to see the first time in this hint box. So let's say that it's gonna tell us mission start points can be found by searching for the glowing orange points on your map. So it would look something like that in the game view. I think the font needs to be a little bit bigger, so maybe let's have that as 20. Maybe that's too big, actually. 18. And how is that looking? Yeah, okay. I think we'll stick with that. If you want yours to look a little better, which I'm sure you do, then just spend that little bit of extra time refining it. Obviously, I show you how the mechanics work for a lot of these things. I don't refine it as much as I should because I don't want to waste the time in the tutorial. 
Um, actually, while I'm here, I'm going to rename that cylinder as well. Uh, let's rename that to mission 001 underscore start. So now we know what this is going to say, our text box. Let's create the script so this comes on and off. And I think the best thing for us to do is probably create an animation for this so it kind of fades on screen and then fades off again. So let's go to our animations and let's create a new folder. And we'll call this one UI. So any UI animations that we ever create should be placed within this folder. So let's start with our text and let's rename this to hint text, <clears throat> just so as it makes more sense. And let's bring our animator down. Um, why is that animator? Not animator. I need to add it, don't I? Add tab and animation. There we go. I'm not sure why it disappeared. It doesn't matter. So let's create the animation for this text. So by default, we're going to want the color to be completely off on the alpha. So let's have it off before we create that animation. So create, and we'll call this as hint fade. And we will start by pressing record and setting the alpha back to zero as the first keyframe, which is good. So we'll let this fade in over the course of a second. So at the 60th frame, we want our text to be completely full on the alpha, 255. Now we have to determine how long we want this hint to be displayed on our screen. I'm thinking probably about seven seconds. So it'll fade in for one second, display for seven, and then fade out for another second. That's the plan. So we need to add seven seconds to here. So we know that five seconds is going to be 300. Another two seconds is going to be 120. So that means we need to add 420 frames to this. Simple math. So that's 480. So by the 480th frame, we still want that alpha to be 255. So let's set it back as 255 again. And you'll notice I do that just so as the number changes and then sets to 255. That's just how the animation works. So then by frame 540, which is the ninth second, the alpha is all the way back to zero. Let's press that record button, head back to our project. And on here, we just need to change the loop time off. So in a little while, <clears throat> we're also going to add an extra animation to this, but it's going to be an empty one because we need to be able to control when this animation plays. But for now, let's just see how this will look when the hint is going to display. So mission start points can be found by searching for the glowing orange points on your map. That's good. And it disappears. So far, everything is looking A-OK. -okay. So we now need to write a script which will allow us to control when that hint is displayed. Because I only want that hint to be displayed maybe one or two seconds after the game has started or we're running around. So let's go to our scripts folder uh, down here. And let's create, um, in fact, let's create another script, uh, another folder, sorry, basically for UI. And in here, let's have a new C-sharp script called hint. In fact, I'll call it global hints, just because it means we're going to access this in other areas. Oops, I did not mean to click out of that. That's what I meant to click in it. There we go. So Global Hints is going to be a script which will be referenced from various other scripts to say it's time to display this hint. So we're going to need to add the namespace for uh, UI, not AI, UI. So using Unity Engine.UI, semicolon. And we're going to add in a couple of variables. So the first one is going to be the text box itself. So public game object hint text. So realistically, what we need to do here is we need to say 
uh, there is a variable in here which tells us what hint to display. Obviously various hints are going to have uh, different numbers assigned to them, so the first hint that we want displaying is going to be assign number 1. So public static int hint number. So that means that whenever hint number, let's say 1, is displayed, then we show that hint. If hint number 0 is displayed, then no hint is displayed. If hint number 2 is to be displayed, then we display whatever hint number 2 is. So we can get rid of the start method and the annotations because we do not need them. And in here we're going to put if hint number equals 1, then do the following. In fact, I'm thinking, should we maybe put a bool? We might put a bool. Let's see how this works out first off. So first things first, when hint number is equal to 1, we'll set hint number back to 0, which means we can't repeat this process. So that now means that hint text dot get component, spiky brackets text, open close bracket dot text equals and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the text that is in there and then I'm going to delete the actual text that is in there. So this box is completely empty right now. The only text that ever displays in there should only ever be done via the code. So we're saying that that's the code, which is good. Perfect. It now means that after... Um, trying to think. After, next frame is going to be... We need to start the animation, don't we? So hint text dot get component spiky brackets animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of our animation. And I'm actually going to copy the animation, which is hint fade, because any typos will mean that this will not work. So it's always good to copy and paste the actual um, name itself. So what's happening here is that we are saying, yep, number one, this is hint number one, play it. So this will only happen once. So next thing to do is if we head to our animator for the hint text, we now need to create that um, new animation, which is new state, and then make that the default. So that now means that we can only play this when it's called via a script. So if we head back into Unity and make sure that this script looks okay. So if it changes to one, then it changes back to zero, but then it still does this and still does this. So let's save our script. And I will put this on the website. If you have any problems, you can go download it there. And let's have this on the sequence holder object. So remember this AA opening that's going to be the script that we can probably add in the change for the hint to display. So for now, let's add in our global hint script on here and add the hint text over here. So if we press play, nothing should actually happen with our hints. Perfect. That's good. So now let's control when that hint actually appears. So we can do it inside this AA opening script. So let's double click to open. And remember, this is the sequence of events that plays. So what we can do after this is when we fade back in, let's copy that line of code to wait. And then we'll wait for another, let's say, four seconds. And then after four seconds, we will say global hints dot hint number equals one semicolon and save. So what's this doing? After we've played that fade in animation and waited four seconds, we'll display that hint. So let's head back into Unity. And I am going to add the fade in back on, save my project, and I'm going to press play. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we should see all of this work as intended. So far so good, no hint is being displayed. 
and we should see it appear any second. There we go. There is our hint appearing on screen. Mission start points can be found by searching for the glowing orange points on your map. Right there. So, we now have a way of controlling the hints that we can display on screen. So obviously this is going to become a bit more advanced as we go forward through the series. For example, if you've not done something, like if you've still not found the orange circle, that hint will display again after another two minutes or something like that. So, I mean, you guys probably could work with that if you wanted to, but that's something we will deal with later on in development anyway. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to deal with those locations. So what I would like to kind of do, I'm trying to think the best way of doing this, is so we'll get the text in there for location name and obviously we start um, at whatever location we are at and when we walk around maybe around the corner to a new area it displays a new location that's the plan anyway so until that next tutorial guys thank you very much for watching